Hi everyone. Today I wanted to go over how we can integrate a progress bar in Access. Now I've previously done two articles, one covering a style of progress bar in Excel exclusively utilizing cells and conditional formatting. And I did another one which was more generalized where we can use a user form and that works everywhere in Office that has user forms except Access. So today I wanted to fill that last gap, which was how can we use a form and add a progress bar onto that that we can then pop up and display as required whenever we're doing any uh, iterative task or process with multiple steps to show to the user, you know, the progress that is being made so they don't think that processes are hung or the application is frozen. So let's dive in. Let's look at how this works. So you're going to notice when you get into this that um, the differentiating factor here between any other Office application is they support user form. So that's traditionally what I was using for Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook. It doesn't make a difference. Uh, but in Access, it doesn't support. There is no user form. You can't. But we have forms, which are extremely similar. There are differentiating factors, but very similar in nature. So you're going to notice when you look at this code that it's very similar to that of the user form progress bar. And there's a reason for that. I inspired myself back and forth. There are some differences, some notable differences, and I actually pushed things a little further with the access one. I have two files here. One is just the core of what we need. So I'm just going to show you what is the bare bones objects that we need to make this happen. And then the second one, I've imported some tables with data. I've built up some test uh, functions just to demonstrate how all of this works. So let's just start off by looking at the bare bones. What do we need to be able to create progress bar? So if I open up the database, you'll see there are only three elements here. We have uh, a form and you're going to notice the design is very similar to that of user form approach. So I've got my label here for a message. I got a label here for a message. I got bo two boxes superimposed here for the progress. And then I have another one here uh, to be able to show the progress, but in a percentage value. Um, for the access form, I also decided to include in a footer with a close button. And you'll see how that works in a moment. Um, and then we have a class module that basically does everything. And then we have a standard module. So let's just pop into the standard module first. It's the easiest one. And as you can see, all it's doing is housing three public variables that are used when the progress bar is running. So then that brings us to the form itself. Well, the form itself has uh, two things happening. It has the close button, but it also has the form opening. And the form opening is simply going to initialize certain variables. Amongst others, those two public variables that we just saw here in the progress bar, the S height and S weight, uh, width. And those are the initial dimensions of the form because my code permits you to resize it. So I have to capture the initial value and compare it to the resize requested value to find the proportions in X and Y, so then we can adjust all the controls and things like that. But beyond that, I'm making the footer hidden so that close button doesn't appear originally. Uh, we're setting the progress value to zero because we're just starting up the uh, progress form, right? There's no progress yet. Um, and we're setting its width to zero, so it, there is no progress. We're setting captions. I'm defaulting the color of the progress bar here and just setting the captions to nothing because we're just initializing the form basically. And then everything happens with the class. The class controls everything, a couple enums. And then we've got a series of functions that we can call to control what happens with the progress form, progress bar. So the show and hide are self-explanatory progress bar caption to change the caption, the color to change the progress bar color. Um, then you have the message box one, you have message box two, 
um, then you have, I've created more complex functions here where you have font parameter. So for message box one, you're able to control, as you can see here, the alignment of the text, the font being used, the weight, the font size, and even the font color. And then I replicate the exact same thing for message box two. So you have the same options. Then we have the progress bar progress itself. So when the value changes, when the percentage complete has changed, well, you're going to call this, and this is what actually makes the progress bar grow, evolve with time. And it also changes the numerical representation of the percentage being displayed. And you see here at the very end, now I have a, uh, an extra little section logic where when we're at 100%, one, now we're going to make that footer visible so that close button will appear. And then we have a few other things where uh, the alignment again. We have overlay. Where do we want that percentage value being displayed? Do we want it on top of the progress bar or right below it? So if you say overlay, a Boolean is true, well then you're making it go right on top of the progress bar. If you don't or you leave it as its default, well then it will be just below the progress bar. And then the last option is you can actually resize it. So you can change the height and the width of the progress bar to suit your needs. You can make it bigger or smaller. And basically what it's doing here is it's going to iterate over all the controls. And based on that initial height and width, and now your new requested height and width, we get proportions or ratios. And I have simply apply those ratios to the height, top, to width, left, padding, etc. So then it's able to grow and shrink accordingly. So the code itself is very straightforward. Nothing rocket science here. Now let's go look at the second database and see how all of this works together. So if we come here now and open the second database, you will see that we have some extra objects. And this is why I didn't want to start with this initially. I don't want to confuse the matter too much initially. But as you can see, I've now imported some tables with data. It's a sample database uh, that one of the MVPs had out there. So I've taken it. It's all dummy data, but it's uh, a lot of dummy data. So it allows us to do some testing, exporting, and I'll be able to use the progress bar for that. And then I also have now just a self-healing module uh, for the database, current database. I have one for the Excel, and then I also have now a module for testing. But you'll notice that the core progress bar objects are here. We have the form, we have the class module, and we have the module. So you don't really need to concern yourself too much with these other uh, modules. But like I say, it's just a self-healing variable. It's just functions for exporting data to Excel. So I have a function here that starts Excel. I have a function here to clear it. I have a function to add a workbook. I have a function to close. So it's just a series of functions and whatnot that I can use. And then we have the testing module. Now the testing module, I have three different tests. So I figure we can just run through them one by one. So if I put my two panes side by side, we can quickly test the first one. Now the first one is very simple. All I'm going to be doing here is I'm iterating over a number of iterations that I've just defined here as 73. And um, it's going to display the progress bar over each each uh, iteration. And I'm adding a small little pause here just so it's visible because otherwise it would rip through this so fast you wouldn't even see the progress. So let's just run it and then we're going to look at the code how it works exactly. So as you can see, it's iterating over 73 iterations and there we go. And as you see, the close button appears at the very end. You say close and it's gone. You could also choose not to need the user to dismiss it. And we could just have this last line there and it would automatically close on its own. So you're in total control of what happens or doesn't happen. Um, okay, so what do we have going on here? Well, we start off at the very beginning by showing the progress bar, progress bar show. Then we go over and I've chosen to overlay the, the number. So if we run it again, pay attention to where the numeric percentage is being displayed. You see, it's overlaid on top of that progress bar. Let's comment that out for a second. 
and run it again. And now notice where it is. Now it's below. So you have the option. You control that with a single command. Then here you have an option for the color of the progress bar. What we've seen so far is it's been orange because I've overridden the default value. But if we run it again, now that I commented it out, you'll have the default blue value. And you can change it for any value you want because you can take and pass it the uh, long value of a color. So the easiest way I find is to use the RGB values. Um, but you can pass any numeric value you want that represents the color you want to display. Then here I'm setting a caption. I'm setting my message one, and I'm also setting the font for message one. So I'm telling it I want it centered, I want it Calibri, I want it normal, I want it size eight, and I want it red. You can change any of these values, or you can just leave the default. So let's just comment that out, run it again, and now, as you can see, there's the default value. And then I, I'm controlling the alignment of message two. Uh, I'm controlling the alignment of the, I'm controlling the alignment of even the progress value. You can set it to whatever you'd like, center, left, right. And then here in the iterative process, I'm once again using message two to display iteration and then the number. And then below it, I'm updating the actual progress. So that's gonna update the progress bar and the numeric value, they're done together. And at the very end, once we're done iterating, then I just say, okay, operation completed. So you can make it as simple or as complex as you want because you can keep this at a bare bones minimum or you can invoke all sorts of options and configure it exactly the way you want. So it can be 20 lines long or it can be just you know five, six lines and then you end up with exactly what you want. Now I have method number two. Now what I've done here is it's just, once again, it's the same general idea. I'm opening it up, displaying it, then I'm configuring all sorts of configurations, then I'm running through steps, and then I finish off with operation completed. And what I'm doing here, if this was a multi-step process instead of an iterative one, um, I'm just throwing in arbitrary sleeps just to make it look random. But if we do this and we run it, you'll see the different steps get run. And if you noticed, I resized it. So you, like I said, you can change the dimensions. And if we run it a second time, you'll see it will be smaller. In the last example, I was taking an existing function that I have, which uh, basically exports all the tables of a database that aren't system tables. And I just wanted to apply my progress bar to that. So once again, I start off by configuring my progress bar here, opening it, configuring it. Then here I'm starting out, uh, Excel, I'm launching Excel. So I'm doing that and I'm using my counter is my where am I in the process for the number of steps? So my counter now is one divided by the total number of steps. So that gives me my percentage complete. Then I come on to the second uh, step. So here we're starting a new workbook. My counter indexes again up one more value. So now we're going to get two divided by the number of steps. And then here we're iterating over all the tables, making sure they're not system tables. And then I'm displaying here a message, exporting table with the name of the table. And then I'm exporting it. I am indexing my counter again and displaying that progress in the progress bar. And when I'm all done, I just come here and I'm displaying operation complete. Now, this will take a bit of time because, like I said, these are large tables, but it's a really good case to show how it works with a real concrete example. So if we run it, as you can see, as it progresses, it evolves and the progress bar displays that to the end user. And there is the end result with every single table's data having been exported. 
and we have the final 100% operation completed. And as I mentioned, you have total control. So you can change the color, you can change the fonts, you can do anything you pretty much want. And once again, you know, this is an, an access form. It's being controlled by a series of functions. You can take it further. You can customize it even further. You know, if you need an extra uh, label here for to display another message, you need three messages. Well, you just add one more label. Enlarge the form a little bit, place it in place. You can go change any of the functions that are in the class module here or add new ones if you're adding new controls. And you can apply the same features, uh, applying fonts changes, changing colors. It's very simple and you now have examples of how it's all done. So you can take this and customize it every further. You can add a, an image if you want it in the corner, some type of logo. You can do whatever you want because it's open. It's just a normal standard form and it's being driven by a bit of VBA code. I should also mention, um, I'm not sure if you anyone noticed, but basically uh, another beautiful thing out of this approach is that this is all native VBA. Uh, there are no APIs, there's no ActiveX, and there's none of that stuff. So this is portable. It will work in both 32 and 64-bit applications of access without issue. We're not making any design changes either. Therefore, this will run fine in the runtime version of Access as well. So that is progress bar and Access. Hope this has been informative. I hope some of you guys can uh, take it for a run and uh, test it out a little bit. Um, if you have any comments, drop me a line below. Please like, subscribe. If you're able to promote my channel in any manner, it is greatly appreciated. And um, I wish you guys all a great day and we'll see you in the next video.